Muscle building doesn't have to be complicated, but it's really easy to get overwhelmed with all the information out there. What actually works and how do you even get started? So today I'm gonna to answer those questions for you and talk about how muscle actually grows and what you need to know before you get started with resistance training. First, let's get clear on what actually makes muscles grow. It's definitely not magic and it's also not doing a hundred different exercises. It all boils down to three key factors, which are mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and progressive overload. Mechanical tension is the stress that we place on our muscles when we're lifting heavy weights or we're using resistance like cables or using your own body weight. Essentially, this tension signals to your body that it needs to build more muscle to adapt to the stress that you're placing on it. Metabolic stress is happening inside of the muscle and it's what happens when we work our muscles really hard during exercise and different byproducts start to build up like lactate. This buildup happens when our muscles are using a lot of energy but not getting enough oxygen. You might experience this as the burning sensation in your muscle that happens when you're doing Doing like a hard set of bicep curls. As a result of these byproducts building up, your body responds by sending signals that will help your muscles grow. Finally, there's progressive overload, which ties it all together. Progressive overload is referring to gradually increasing the challenge on your muscles over time. When you lift heavier weights, do more reps, or push yourself harder, your body is forced to adapt. And that's what leads to hypertrophy or the process of growing your muscles bigger and strength gains. This means that if you were to do the same workouts with the same weight week after week, your progress would eventually stop, which ultimately shows how important progressive overload is to your success. In the fourth video of this series, which will be dropping in like a week or two, I'm going to be doing a deep dive on progressive overload and how you would use it in your own programming to build muscle. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on that video. Okay, so now that you know how muscles actually grow, let's talk about some key variables of resistance training and how they relate to building muscle. These are the building blocks of any good program. Okay, so first we have in intensity, which refers to how heavy you're lifting and is usually measured as a percentage of your one rep max of all the exercises that you're doing. For building muscle, a sweet spot is typically in that six to 12 rep range where the weight is feeling really challenging, but it's still manageable. Though in future videos, we will talk about lighter loads taken to 15 plus reps and how they also have a place in your hypertrophy program. Next, we have volume, which is the amount of work that you're doing and is the product of the amount of reps, sets, and weight that you use during a training session. Research shows that doing multiple sets per muscle group or having a higher volume is more effective for muscle growth than doing only one set. And then lastly, we have frequency, which is how often you're training each muscle group. Typically, we wanna be training each muscle group at least one time per week, but research does show that training it two times per week is better than once per week. So this is definitely something that we take into account when we're building our program to ensure that we are maximizing our chances of building muscle. Exercise selection, the amount of rest we take in between our sets, how hard we push ourselves during each set, and even how fast we perform the exercise are also all key variables that we're gonna dive deeper into in that fourth video of this series that I just mentioned earlier. The reason that knowing all of this is actually important is because once you understand the basic principles of hypertrophy like progressive overload, you could basically apply these things to any exercise selection and still make progress. During COVID, I lost access to all the heavy weights, the cables, the regular machines, all the stuff at the gym that I had utilized for years. And all I had in my studio apartment were a few bands, uh, I think two rusty dumbbells, and of course my body weight. And because I understood these principles, I was still able to increase my muscle mass and gain strength. Maybe I'm a nerd, but I do think that's really cool. Okay, here's the part that most people forget and sometimes I even need to be reminded of this but muscles don't grow when we're working them at the gym they're growing when they're resting recovery is a time that your body needs to repair and rebuild muscles after exercise it's also super important if you want to see results and get stronger recovery happens in phases starting with calming down the inflammation and soreness right after your workout ends and ending with your muscles growing stronger over the next two to three days this is why the structure of your program does matter because if you're training your quads for example, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and you're hitting them really hard and they're feeling super fatigued and very sore, there's a really high chance that you're overtraining or just under recovered, which could actually lead to muscle breakdown instead of muscle repair and building. Little side note, it could also lead to serious injury and we want to avoid that as much as we possibly can. Typically giving each muscle group 48 to 72 hours to rest and recover before you hit them hard again is best. So how can we actually help our body with this recovery? 
recovery process. Number one is definitely getting good sleep because sleep is when our body does most of its repairing. So try to get about seven to nine hours of sleep each night when you can. Number two is refueling with nutrient dense food. Like I spoke about in the first video of this series, everyone's calorie needs on a daily basis are gonna be different, but we do know that eating 0.8 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight is very helpful to build muscle. If you'd like a free copy of my cheat sheet for calculating how many calories you would need to maintain, lose, or even gain body weight, the link for that is gonna be provided in the description below, so go check that out if you'd like. The third thing that you could do to help with the recovery process is staying hydrated. Drinking enough fluids can help your body transport nutrients more efficiently, which can help with recovery. And lastly, just take rest days when they're needed. Let your muscles rest so that they're ready to go for your next workout. A few other things that could help the recovery process along are light movement like walking or swimming or yoga. There's also stretching, foam rolling, compression therapy, and ice therapy. Here's a thing that I think a lot of people don't understand. The better that you recover, the harder you can train, and the more progress you'll probably see. Recovery is part of the foundation for consistent muscle growth. So if you want to continue to make progress, make sure that you're also prioritizing your recovery. That is everything that you need to know right now to start building muscle. How it grows, the principles behind resistance training, and why recovery is essential. Remember, it really is all about consistency and basically just trying to perfect these things over time. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss out on my next video. Speaking of, in the next video, we're gonna be diving into the best exercises to build muscle fast as a beginner. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what you need to be incorporating into your routine to get results without wasting any time. See you guys soon.